Hello and welcome to 3-5. Today we're going to be talking about multiplying decimals. Um, here we have a little uh, information for you. It says one pound on earth equals 17 hundredths pounds on the moon. So you can figure out how many pounds you would weigh on the moon if you know how to multiply decimals. So let's get into that here. So a flag weighs three pounds on earth. What is its weight? What is its weight? Oops, that's kind of right wrong. What is the weight of the flag on the moon? If we know that one pound on earth equals 17 hundredths pounds on the moon, we'd want to multiply uh, 17 hundredths times 3. Okay, and here's the deal. We do it just like regular multiplying. 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 more is 5. Now, most people say, okay, so then you just bring your decimal down, good to go. And in this case, it's going to be in the same spot. But here's what we do. We see how many digits are to the right of the decimal. And even if our second number we has a decimal, we count those two. But our number here, 3, is a whole number, no decimals. So we have two digits that are to the right of this decimal here. Okay, so I'm going to bring back my decimal two spots. So my answer is going to be 51 hundredths is how much the flag weighs on the moon. Um, so I should say 51 hundredths pounds because we are doing a word problem. 51 hundredths pounds. About half a pound. Okay, let's go to the next one. Find each product. So I just write it out like normal. We want the number that has the more digits to be on the top. It doesn't necessarily matter if it's a bigger number or smaller. In this case, it's going to be a smaller number because 3 is smaller than 4, but it has less more digits, so we want to put it on the top. 3 and 25 hundredths times 4 and 8 tenths. Do you see how we do not line up the decimal points? I get a lot of students that want to line up decimal points and they're adding zero, which makes their multiplying more complicated. So just write the numbers down as they are. We don't need to add any zeros, we just write them down. All right, now let's go through multiply. Five times eight is 40. Eight times two, 16, plus four more is 20. Eight times three is 24, plus two more is 26. Okay, now I'm moving to my next digit, so I have to put that zero in here as my placeholder. Um, four times five is 20. Four times two is eight, plus two more is 10. And four times three is 12, plus one more is 13. Now I add them like normal. I, you notice I haven't done anything different. I just have to add those decimal place, points in at the last step. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 6 plus 0 is 6. 2 plus 3 is 5. 1 is 1. Um, okay, so now here's where I do my... This is the only thing that's different. Here's a decimal point. I have one, two numbers to the right. Here's a decimal point. I have one number to the right, so how many digits do I have to the right? One, two, three. So that means I'm going to move my decimal point back one, two, three spots. So my number is 100, or sorry, 15 and 6 tenths is my answer. There we go. Okay, so let's try another one. Now, um, we could do it this way. Zero and five tenths times nine tenths. Oh, sorry, five hundredths times nine tenths. Okay, nine times five is 45. Nine times zero is zero, plus four more is four. And I'd get a zero. And I'd get zero, zero, zero. And then I, sorry, I added in my zero because I was going to a new place value. So if I add them together, I'm going to get 45. Okay. So now I need to count how many numbers are to the right of the decimal. 
here's a decimal, so I count one, two digits. Here's a decimal, I count one digit, so that means I have to move my decimal back three spots. I have an open spot right here, so I have to put that zero in there and a zero in front. So my answer is zero and 45 thousandths. All right, so again, we just do regular old multiplying and then we count how many digits are to the right of the of the decimal point and then we move the decimal back that many spots. Let's do one more example here. Okay, so this is kind of what we've been doing before that it's kind of written weird. Evaluate 3x for each value. So I have to multiply 3 by 4 and 47 thousandths and 3 by 2 and 95 hundredths. Okay, so I have 3x is my original expression for x equals that. So I'm going to do 3 times 4 and 47 thousandths. Okay, and then I'm going to do my scratch work off to the side. Okay, that would be 21, 12, 13, 14, 1, and 12. Then I add my, oh, sorry, that's it. I don't have to add anything. It's not a two-digit number I'm multiplying by. So then I count. Here's my decimal. I have 1, 2, 3 digits to the right. So I bring my decimal pack. 1, 2, 3 digits. So my answer is 12 and 141 thousandths. And if we look back, you guys, we can see that really I'm multiplying 3 times 4. So my answer should be somewhere around 12. So we know that we got the right answer. Because some kids will get their decimal point off and maybe put it here. And tell me it's 121. And then I'll say, well, but 3 times 4 is nowhere near 121. So how'd you get such a big number? It's just because they put their decimal point in the wrong spot. So it's always good to make sure that you're kind of estimating before so that you can check, uh, did I do my multiplying correct? So here's our total here. Now let's do one more example. So 3x, I know 3 times 2 and 95 hundredths. Let's multiply that. Now I'm just putting 2 and 95 hundredths on the top because it has the most digits. Here I have 15. 9 times 3 is 27, plus 1 more is 28. 3 and 2 is 6, plus 2 more is an 8. Count how many digits are to the right of the decimal point. 2. Bring it back twice. So my answer is 8 and 85 hundredths. All right, and that, my friends, is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.